so fun. Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Overland Journal and Expedition Portal. And this is an extremely exciting day for us because we get to be the first in North America to give driving impressions on the new INEOS Grenadier. The prototype vehicle. And of course, we're in a beautiful location. We're actually near the Awari National Forest, and we're working with the talented folks from Overland Experts to be able to explore all of these testing grounds that they have in this incredible facility. And this is something we love so much about Overland vehicles, but it is so difficult to find in the modern day. driving in some of the, the back roads here and I've been in the vehicle only <clears throat> for a few minutes so these are going to be really early impressions but what I'm noticing is we've got fairly low head toss which is always a good indicator of both wheel travel and shock damp settings so we're not getting a really busy ride um, this is going to be a five link suspension front and rear so long travel it's going to have good articulation um, it's going to be limited in the front because of the fact that it has an anti-sway bar that's permanently attached um, but normally when that anti-sway bar is permanently attached you get a lot more head toss than i'm experiencing right now so we're off to a good start So we've got our first obstacle here. We've got center differential is locked, but the diffs are open because we're trying to get a sense for tractive performance. So we're trying to get a sense for how the vehicle articulates through the obstacle, what we feel for throttle modulation and control. And of course, it just climbed right through here uh, without any wheel spin, which is exciting. All right, so we are cruising along here in the Grenadier at moderate speed. So we're on a two track, which means that we're gonna be monitor monitoring our speed anyways, because uh, there's a lot of inconsistency in the terrain, but it's that inconsistency that gives us some sense on how the vehicle handles larger inputs, larger events uh, that may disrupt the chassis or make the vehicle respond unexpectedly. But so far we're seeing good compression travel and we're also seeing um, a really comfortable ride overall. In low range, uh, the transmission shifting up at least into sixth gear. So it's giving us a comfortable cruising speed across the terrain. I wouldn't be going any faster than this anyways, uh, but we are moving with some efficiency through the terrain very comfortably. You can tell though that the vehicle has a lot of capability and a lot of capacity. Capacity is so important for, for those of us that travel overland because we need to be able to carry stuff. So we can feel that the spring rate is a little firmer because it's designed to carry that 1,700 plus pounds of payload, uh, which we've been asking for from OEM forever. And we've got it right now in the Grenadier. <laughs> yeah, brah. <laughs> Ditch. Uh, what it mostly showcased was the approach angle, which is which is quite good on this vehicle. Uh, we also didn't get any 
scraping on break over, over as well. And then coming off, I was sure that we might get a little bit of a touch in the back, but nothing. It was absolutely not a single point of contact for approach, break over, or departure. You know, I'm just kind of cruising along this really beautiful leafy trail here throughout the Uari. I mean, you can tell how perfect this is for evaluating vehicles of this type. All right, so we're cruising along here. We've got some water bars here in the trail. Uh, for the most part, it's a moderate surface, a lot of dust, but uh, ride control is good. So we're what we're looking for in situations like this is those uh, indicators of driver fatigue. Uh, head toss is one of those things. A lot of noise and vibration would be another one. We want the vehicle to impart that sense of confidence to the driver as we're going through terrain like this uh, so that you can also relax a little bit when you're not actually in technical terrain. All right, we're coming through some larger holes here. There's a large ditch the passenger side is dropping through right now. Hood is staying really level. The vehicle feels very stable. Um, all right, so that's why we have rock sliders. We got a little bit of contact on an earthen berm, which usually wouldn't even hurt a sill, but it's still nice to have that kind of protection. All right, so in initial impressions so far in these technical obstacles, hood is staying really flat, even though it does have a front sway bar that's connected. So lots of articulation in the rear, reasonable articulation out of the front. Uh, really good throttle modulation, brake modulation and control. So driver inputs are very consistent. The car's doing what I expect it to do in this terrain. Um, turning radius is better than I was expecting for a solid axle vehicle. Uh, of course, a lot of that is because I'm used to driving other solid axle vehicles that don't have as good turning radius as this, but it's nice, nice to see that. It's consistent with other good vehicles in the, in the marketplace. The low range is, is plenty low which again gives that sense of driver control. It gives that sense of confidence in the vehicle. I really like the driving position. You can actually adjust the seat up a little higher to give you a better commanding view of the trail. Okay, now we've got a couple of, of logs embedded in the trail. Logs are actually a unique challenge for a vehicle because you have a very low traction surface and they're usually very abrupt and the tires really like to spin on them. So we actually want to take them a little bit at an angle so that the vehicle can come up and over like that. And we're also going to be really mindful of our running ground clearance as well. So this is a little bit larger log we're about to come up here. And we're just, it doesn't have to be at a real angle, just enough where one tire can begin to climb and then the other one follows it. And we're going to stay on this line. So it feels really good on the logs. Again, that throttle modulation is excellent. There's a lot of torque out of this engine down low. You can feel it combined with that 50 to 1 low range. So we're really able to manage the car through those obstacles. All right, so we had such good success with the last incline that we went up that we're actually going to get it onto a little bit steeper slope. This vehicle is designed to be very stable at extreme side slopes. All right, so we're at 8 degrees and 20, 9 degrees, 10 degrees, 11 degrees. Sure, let's go over, let's go over and get a little cross axle there. All right, so this is a, a really abrupt crossed axle event coming up 
over a big mound and if we were to go straight over it we'd probably bottom out so we're coming at it at an angle here. Okay, so these are my thoughts, my conclusions on a day spent with the Ineos Grenadier. Most important to note is that this is still a prototype vehicle. So a lot of these systems are going to continue to evolve and they're going to evolve based upon feedback from drivers like myself. Most important, it is built to purpose. It is intentionally built to be an overland vehicle. This was designed from the ground up to literally drive around the world and because of that, it expresses that intentionality across every touch point that I've had with the vehicle today. From the fact that it has the best payload capacity of any vehicle of its type in the segment for North America, we have solid front and rear axles, we have front and rear axle diff locks, we have a center diff lock, we have a 50 to 1 low range, uh, 35 degree approach, 36 degree departure, and this vehicle is designed for rugged roads in remote areas. It's also intentionally simple, intentionally austere on the inside, which means that it's meant for hard use. It's meant to throw your Pelican cases in the back. It's meant to get dusty and dirty. And even as the rain is coming down right now in the Southeast, it is vehicles like this that are designed for multi-terrain off-road. It's not just in intended for rock crawling. This vehicle, because of its 115 inch wheelbase, it can do well on a climb. It's also very stable, easy to modulate the brake, fairly easy to modulate the throttle as well, effective traction control, and of course those magic buttons with the differential locks. So these Recaro seats are sweet. They are super supportive, really comfortable. For long periods of time in the vehicle, I was in the vehicle for hours today. One of the things I noted, there's not a single electric operation of the seat at all. So everything is mechanical. You can raise and lower the seat, but it's all mechanical. This is how you lean the seat back. This is how you adjust the seat forward or aft. So an all mechanical seat, none of that stuff to fail. Or if you get into deep water, it doesn't damage those motors and gears. The last thing that I noticed about the vehicle that I think is really important is that it is a canvas. A vehicle like this is gonna get a lot of aftermarket support. It's gonna not only get a lot of aftermarket support from Ineos itself, but it's also gonna get a broad availability of accessories from the aftermarket. Imagine what the vehicles like this are gonna look like in just a couple years. drives really well.